when we use the five expression. So in 2010, when we started our business, we started to sell in chocolates to gourmet grocers, curated gift shops, and hotels and cafes, and things are going great. However, being a handmade chocolate maker, uh, there was only so much that uh, we can make in a week. And we had this dilemma of whether to expand our business and automate some of the process or to commit to our artisanal skills and craftsmanship and stay where we were. So we chose the latter and by choosing the latter, we knew we wouldn't be millionaires, but it was all right with us. But then in 2016, we had a um, new opportunity. New opportunity came around. Uh, there was a prospect of growing our business with a 140 year old Japanese gourmet food company called Hontaka Sagoya from Kobe in Japan. And the 140 year old company was looking to revitalize its place in the Japanese market. And we are looking for a means to get into the market without losing our craftsmanship and handmade quality. It took us a while to grasp the future vision together because our business models are so different. And after many hours of communication and building a relationship, we came to realize that uh, this, our partnership can be mutually beneficial. The Japanese company had uh, all the facilities we needed, uh, manpower, trust and the relationship in, in the market. And for us, we could bring our skill, knowledge, and the brand to the company. However, the Japanese chocolate market is quite mature and oversaturated with so many good quality produce and goods and famous brands from all over the world. So the question was, how do we enter the market and stand up from the crowd and survive the competition? So the first step entering the market, think about the Japanese market is that there's a, always a room for newcomers. Japanese culture is sensitive to new trends and open to new ideas. So getting into the market is the easiest part. But the hardest thing is to stay in the market and secure a place as a well-established, trusted brand which will attract loyal customers. And second step, standing out from the crowd. So after having increased our profit um, by nearly 300% in almost two years, we strongly believe that our strengths come from the fact that we are from Australia. And Australia isn't known for chocolates, nor rich food culture, but we are known for truffles, wine, beef, and most importantly, the free, sorry, fresh, clean produce and ingredients. 
And with our diversified agricultural produce in the multicultural society, we have so much to offer. And not to mention a native Australian ingredients and the rich history of Aboriginal culture. And the third step, to survive and succeed in the Japanese market, simply having great product and produce, it's not enough. And on top of having great packaging and effective marketing strategies, we have to have a special connection with the customers. Something extra that will catch their well-trained eyes, which is very tough, it's a tough market. Now, I think, do we have any questions, Carol? Hi, Yuki. I have a, um, a question for you. Um, yeah. When you when you found that company, how did you go about finding that company? I mean, there must be so many in Japan. Did you narrow in on um, an area that you wanted to focus on, or did you use um, some assistance in in WA? Ah, oh, that's a good question. That was the uh, actual um, serendipity, I guess. Um, so one of the representative from Honda Kasawaya Company. Um, he happened to be on a holiday in Perth and found our chocolate and brought it back to Japan and showed it to the people in company and they loved it. So it was just a lucky coincidence that happened. But when I heard the name of the company, Honda Kasagoya, it's a quite well-known company in Japan and I thought it was a joke. <laughs> uh, but he it, it was not. Um, they were very nice people. And like I said, it took us a while to really get to the point what we want from each other. Um, but Can I ask about how long did that um, negotiation process or getting to know each other process uh, last before you were finally able to, um, to start? It took us to actual, to it took us about six to no six, actually seven months to get to the point we actually can uh, find a contract and detailed everything on the paper yes all right and without revealing any you know commercial and confidence um, <laughs> things um, what, what is the nature of, of your um, agreement um, with them is it you know 50 50 um, or you operate here they operate there how does how does it all work Yes, um, there are different ways to do this, um, but I knew that I wanted to produce chocolate in Japan. Even though we are Australian company, um, we had the option of shipping our chocolates from here, make here, and then ship it to Japan. But a lot of, lot of companies um, do it, but there's a risk associated with it. Uh, chocolate, chocolate is very sensitive to temperature changes and humidity and emotions uh, during the transportation. So I really wanted to make sure that when the customers see our chocolates, I wanted the chocolate to be perfect. So I said, I need to make it in Japan. <laughs> and it, And of course that means it takes a lot of preparation and uh, money, the investment on their behalf, uh, but they agree. I, I think that's where we agreed on. They want to provide the best quality product to the customers. So we, we do everything. We can, we can do the test run here. The, um, we can do everything in my kitchen, but our actual production that I sell in Japan is made in Japan. That's great, excellent. Do we have any um, questions uh, from the attendees? Oh yes, uh, this is from Alma. She says yeah. thanks for the webinar. Um, can you please tell how did you 
find funding or investment for your company. Did, did you re, uh, receive any support from the public sector in Japan and from what level, municipal, regional or, or state? That's a great question. Um, so all the setup of the business in here, we had the savings and actually we didn't really take up much of an investment. We saved money, we started really small. Um, so we just let the business grow organically at the slow pace. Um, from a business perspective, probably it's not the best product, uh, strategy, but that worked for us. So, yeah. Excellent. Um, you, I have another question. You mentioned yep. you needed to have a, um, you know, a good product, uh, beautiful packaging, um, but also a special um, connection with your cu customers, a, a something mm -hmm. special. And what? And um, maybe you said it already. Maybe you could explain to me again what that something special um, was for you in in Japan to connect with the customers. Yes, um, I think bringing bringing um, human touch or human connection that was an important part because we could simply send we could we could simply make a chocolate there and then say this is a chocolate this is a brand we could have done that but i actually made sure that i'll be in the shop i'll bring myself and greet the customers and i'll tell everyone that we are i'm from australia and how the chocolates are made and i really like to do that because that's the important um reading on a piece of paper on the in a display case it's not the same you know that then i be there and then actually i get to tell the customers so i really um emphasize on that so i make sure i go there that real Australian connection. Um, mm -hmm. Actually, that's something that I thought was interesting. I don't know if you can share your screen again and, mm -hmm. and show the, the picture of you in the yeah. shop in, in Kobe um, for everyone. Um, sure. Um, there you can see. Um, this one. Ah, oh, this one. So yeah. this is Yuki's shop in Kobe. And as you can see there, it says Nakamura Chocolate, Chocolate Artisan, Perth, Australia. So um, I thought that was really, um, really lovely uh, to be promoting um, Australia in Kobe. So we have another question here. Sure. Uh, chocolates are made in Japan. Are they sold as Australian chocolates? And are any of the ingredients from Australia? Yes. Um, so we have different we have about 26 kinds of chocolates. And amongst those, 10 of them are Australian bush flavors. So in here in Perth as well, we sell them too. Uh, but in Japan, they are quite popular because not many people know what the Australian native ingredients are, the bush food. In Perth, uh, it's getting popular, people like to Fuse in uh, beauty products and health food and getting more attention these days. Um, but I wanted to incorporate into my chocolate and I did that. So I use, for example, I use uh, wattle seed, macadamia nuts, what's well, not native, but macadamia nuts, strawberry gum, and lots of different types of honey. So I do use those ingredients. And it, it's fun to explain, get to explain to them what they are because they don't, it's not, not well known yet. Excellent, excellent. Um, do we have any other questions from um, anyone on the line here? Great to see so many people joining in. Mm. And so how many years have you been open in Kobe now with your partnership? It's been, it's been, it's going for our fourth year. Yes. Yes. Right. Oh, we have another chocolate from Georgie. I think um, uh, I'm so impressed that you make each chocolate individually. Do you encounter any issues with meeting demand between Perth and Japan? Uh, I'm interested to know how many chocolates can generally be handmade for distribution in a week or so. 
That, that's a full loaded question. Um, <laughs> we, we were in Perth. The situation is a little bit different from Perth to Japan. Um, so in Japan, so in Perth, we have to limit the amount of chocolate that we can make in here because like I said, it's all handmade and I want to deliver the freshest chocolates um, to everybody every week. So I make fresh batch every week and deliver every week. So there's only a certain amount that I can make in a week. Mm. And that means sometimes I have to say sorry to our stockist. Um, but that's the way it is now. And in Japan, uh, the capacity is a little bit bigger. We have more team members there. So in, I, I'm going to talk about this uh, Valentine season later on in my speech, but um, Valentine season in Japan, that's the busiest time for chocolate makers. And for that period, to give you a perspective, uh, we supply to 20 department stores uh, around that. And every day from the mid January to the 14th of February, every day we sell out. So it's a quite large amount of quantity we're talking about, yeah. A good, that's a good problem to have. <laughs> yeah. And um, have you thought about expanding into any other countries besides Japan from this experience? Um, we have been thinking about it, but sometimes the climate and the transportation issues and it's it's been a bit difficult. Uh, but I. I would like to make sure that I like to make sure that everything in terms of production, I want to make sure that everything is in perfect condition. So uh, being a little bit of control freak here, uh, it's not the easiest thing for me to say okay to everything in that situation. So um, at this point, I'm happy with Australia and Japan, but maybe in the future, there's a possibility. Yes. Okay, excellent. Um, you said you had some more things to, to share with us. Um, do you want to talk about that? Um, yeah, sure. Oh, sure. Okay. Great. We'll take some questions later. Okay. I'll just go back. We got to the page. All right. So I was talking um, about how we survive, how we have been surviving in Japan. Um, and I think that, uh, I hope uh, today's audience in Japan agree with me on this point, that people in Japan, I think they are curious about Australia. And I have been seeing and hearing more media coverage about, especially Western Australia, Perth, Maga River, um, over the past few years in Japan. And what is unique about our brand is that we bring the right amount of Australianness. I don't know if it's a word, but without really overwhelming them. Because um, we, we bring our unique produce and brand and culture in a digestible form and shape. And in our case, chocolate. Um, and when we brought our brand to Japan, I wanted people to experience the cool air of an ocean breeze and the smell of gum trees and the heat of hot summer. So I really wanted to make sure that people can feel that, those elements. And we tried to in incorporate that in our shop in Kobe. <clears throat> And uh, one more point on survival strategy uh, in Japan, they have quite strong cultural identities and pride and history. So I think it is important that we respect 
and modify our product according to their lifestyle and customs. So for example, we have done some collaboration with premium sake makers and green tea producers in Japan, and we made chocolate with them, and they have been a great success. And um, we see that the, well, I'm just gonna go up one more sorry. And we see that the future of Western Australia and Japan as a really bright one, a good one. Um, Japanese people are curious about, about the food and the culture and the people and the lifestyle. And which we take for granted if we're in Australia, we take beautiful beaches and we take for granted for sure. Um, but compared to the life in Japan, some people might call it a slow life, but I think it's a good thing. Majestic nature, the honest, our honest moral values and kind-hearted people. Um, I think those are the qualities that we should be proud of and should include in our product and company values if possible. And this one, I want to talk about this Valentine season. Um, so every January and February, I spend about 20 days touring all the major department stores in Japan, um, which carry our chocolates in this Valentine season. And in Japan, they have this custom of giving each other, I think it started as a female to male custom, they're giving a gift of chocolates in this season. But these days, it's increasingly so um, to exchange gift or chocolates to, between friends, among friends and families. So in this season, uh, when I visit each one of the shops, I I'm there to represent Nakamura Chocolates, um, but also Western Australia. And I use our chocolates as a medium to show and tell everybody how fantastic Western Australia is. And my part in this future relationship might be minimal, but I strongly believe in this Japanese proverb it goes, um, it goes like this. Hito suji no ya wa orubeshi. And to suji no ya wa origatashi. So the literal meaning is that um, one arrow can be folded, but breaking is difficult with for 10 arrows. So my interpretation of this proverb is that we can do this, if a large number of people pull their strength together. And that's how I would like to approach it. Um, our business won't survive by itself. So I like to thank everybody and I like to uh, collaborate with as many people as we can. And that's how we go forward. And I believe that's why we're all here today. Thank you, Carol. Back to you. Oh, thank you, Yuki. Well, um, I, for one, are um, very glad to have um, your arrow in our WA quiver. Is that the right terminology? <laughs> <laughs> um, definitely think, um, you know, having, having you uh, around as an ambassador for WA is a great thing for, for our state. Uh, so thank you. Does anyone else have any questions? Um, for Yuki, um, while well, she's here, um, uh, I did want to say if anyone's looking at um, exporting to Japan, to please use the excellent resources we have at JETSI, at the Department of Jobs, Tourism, Science, and Industry, um, to contact uh, David McCulloch, uh, the WA Trade Commissioner in Tokyo. Uh, he's actually in Perth at the moment, so. He's a great resource. You can reach out to him um, 
uh, and talk about you know your business and and what you're doing and and what opportunities um, there might be out there for you. Um, I know that there are some export market development grants available. Um, uh, there are some you know requirements for that, but you know your business might might fit into that. So um, there is quite a bit of assistance um, out there um, from our our government to um, export Western Australian products um, um, to Asia and of course particularly to to Japan. And you know from my experience, um, Japanese people are very interested in in uh, Western Australian um, products and and people, and of course coming coming to visit. So, um, you know, even though we can't travel um, to Tokyo, it's a, it's a good time to, um, to, be, to be planning for, uh, for the future. Um, so I do have another question here. Um, oh, where'd it go? <laughs> uh, where do you think you will be today if the company had not partnered with Nakamura Chocolates? Would your business have stayed solely in Perth? <clears throat> Um, I would say yes to that. Um, we, we had been looking for means to get into the Japanese market, but without the right support, it would be very difficult. And yes, I think if the Japanese partnership didn't happen, probably we would be in only in Perth. Um, probably took a different route to grow our business. Yeah. Okay. I just have a correction. It's the Department of Jobs, Sir, uh, Jobs Tourism, Science and Innovation. I oh, yes, that's it. That's right. <laughs> just waiting for another question from, um, they come up on my screen as hello. Mm -hmm. um, they wanted to type their, their question here. Uh, what are the flavors ingredients you have tried for your chocolates that did not make it into your chocolate selection? <laughs> That's a good question. Yes. Or well, the ones that you did try that weren't popular in Japan that are popular here? Um, there are so many ingredients that didn't make it to the chocolate. <laughs> uh, because usually we have different selection of chocolates and then to make one box, we, it takes about two years to complete. The whole package. So lots of uh, R and D goes in there, um, and some of the chocolate or well, some of the ingredients. I I couldn't recall exactly what it was, but one time we made this one and tasted like fish, <laughs> and we thought, hmm, probably it would not go down well. <laughs> Maybe in a fish and chip shop, but not at the shop. So. Oh, that's funny. Um, you adjusted to the Japanese taste and market. This is from Jane Garrett. Um, partnering with sake makers. Would you think of bringing them to the Australian market? Yes, I like to do that. Um, I like to do that. I, I think in Australia, a lot of people are they have a good impression about Japan, so many people have been to Japan. So if I could introduce more of the Japanese ingredients and culture to Australia, and if, if we could be the liaison for that, I think that'd be wonderful. I'd like to do that. Um, here's a, a question maybe a few people have. Are there any cultural barriers to be mindful of for Australian companies looking to export to Japan or, or work with, with ja Japanese companies? Uh, yes. Definitely. Um, language is the biggest barrier, of course. And I think people have to be mindful of social norms. That's not written in a book. Um, so it's, I think it's a good option to bring someone who has great knowledge about the company culture, work ethics. Um, we do hear those things here and there but actually to be there and do business with japanese company it's quite different uh, so if i think if you make an uh, effort to know a bit of language i think that will help quite a bit mm. um, 
and also uh, one last thing is about uh, regulations about food labels, the what ingredients you can use. It's quite strict there. So for us, we had experience um, as well. So I think you have to be prepared to modify if you need to. Need to. And yes, be transparent yeah. about what you bring. Yeah. I think that's a that's an excellent question. Um, there are, there are cultural barriers with uh, doing business with um, any other country, um, and Japan has its own um, set of um, you know business norms and, and culture. And there are resources mm -hmm. out there, and also mm -hmm. something that um, the state government can assist with uh, as well. Any other questions out there? All right, Yuki, do you have anything to add before we, we close off this session? Um, I'd just like to say thank you, thank you everybody for being here today. Um, thank you, Carol. And if you have a chance, uh, if I have a chance, I'd love to go to Banbury and there is the Japanese festival myself. So I might do that. Excellent. We hope to see you here. Thank you so much for, for your time. Um, uh, everyone, if you are free, we have more virtual sessions um, this week. We have Japanese homestyle cooking tomorrow, Japanese teas with Patsy from the tiny tea shop in Nanup. Uh, we have a haiku workshop with Professor Vari McKenzie. And on Friday, we have Z Wabi Sabi and the Wonder of the Everyday with Will Yeoman from the West Australian. So I do hope to see some of you uh, on those sessions. And um, again, uh, thank you, Yuki, and congratulations on the success of your business. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>